welcome to my lecture on using technology to achieve beautiful skin. We have multiple devices in the office and having such a diverse armamentarium allows us to use the tool that's best suited for your needs, individual skin type, available downtime, and fear or hesitancy regarding the temporary discomfort or potential scary appearance while healing. When I'm trying to cover these options during a surgical consultation, I think I completely overwhelm people, so having a lecture that you can refer to repeatedly will be extremely helpful and something that you can always return to over and over again when you're trying to decide what the best choice is for you at that specific time. These are the topics that I'm going to cover, and if you haven't watched the presentation on skincare first, I highly recommend that you do that. Using appropriate skincare is essential to getting and maintaining the best result possible for these treatments. An analogy I like to use is cosmetic dentistry. Say you're interested in major stuff like whitening your teeth, getting braces, veneers, or dental implants. Skincare is kind of like making sure you're brushing your teeth first every day before jumping into something that's more aggressive and pricey. Microneedling is not new, but very popular because of the minimal downtime. You can also enhance your results by combining it with additional procedures and products such as growth factors for even better results. We're also very proud to be one of the first in our region to offer Intracell, which combines the ease of microneedling with the power of a more dramatic laser procedure using a type of heat called radiofrequency. Broadband light, also referred to as BBL, or intense pulse light, IPL, are just two different trademark names for what is essentially the same thing. Intense bright light, which sounds like it should really be our skin's enemy, can be used for good. It can improve pigmentation, redness, acne, help to build collagen, and even wake up genes associated with youthful skin um, that kind of fall asleep as we get older. Then we can break out the big guns, lasers. I'll talk about our Cyton Jewel, which is an ablative erbium laser that targets the water in your skin for improved texture, wrinkle reduction, building new collagen, and in some areas, tightening the skin. Finally, I'll cover our Halo Hybrid Fractional Laser, which uses two different laser treatments, one ablative and, not, and one non-ablative, which I'll teach you later in this lecture, that are delivered simultaneously to get the best of both worlds with maximal results and very limited downtime and discomfort. This is great for patients who are either scared of doing a laser procedure, don't have a lot of time, or want to look good fast and who like the idea of doing a serious series of less aggressive treatments rather than one more aggressive treatment. Now, achieving and keeping beautiful skin kind of takes the same work that um, lifestyle changes do to improve your overall health, fitness, and weight. No one expects to work out once with a trainer and walk out of the gym ready for their Sports Illustrated cover model shoot. Yet, I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, well, I did an IPL once and I didn't really notice any difference, or I have Retin-A in my drawer, but I just don't use it. This is a process. Now, it's not to say you can't sprint to the finish line by starting with more aggressive treatments, but it's really the ongoing um, upkeep of your skin that's going to give you the best and most long-lasting results. I wish people were interested in their 20s and 30s about this, but that's really not the case. You know, people really don't start paying better attention to their skin, typically to the, their 40s, and I'll see patients into their 80s that are interested in improvement. So while the path may be different for each individual person and the ultimate uh, reaching your ultimate goal may be faster or slower for different people, you're never too young or too old to start taking better care of your skin. Now, in general, we all age the same. Our skin changes, becoming less smooth, less elastic, and kind of mottled or dingy in appearance. We also lose volume in some areas, like around our eyes and our upper cheeks and the lateral jawline, and then start to find it in others, like under our chin or in our jowls. This combination of loss of elasticity and volume leads to laxity or a relative abundance of extra skin. That tends to be where surgery comes in. 
There are intrinsic factors that affect the aging of our skin, and most notably, it's our chronologic age. We can maybe do a little bit to help with intrinsic uh, factors, but generally, it's beyond our control. It's the extrinsic factors that have the biggest influence on how we age, and we absolutely have some degree of control over these. So we can't take it back, all the good or bad things we've done to our skin, but uh, you really want to start making changes when you can because your first step is, uh, if you want to make your skin look better, is stop making it look worse. So if you don't know this already, I'm kind of the queen of analogies, and I like using tree bark as one uh, for looking at the surface of our skin as we age. So the bark of an aspen tree is smooth and more even, and that's more like younger skin. As we age, the outer layers of our skin become more irregular, bumpy, discolored, and rough like the pine tree. We want to keep this ugly layer of our skin looking thinner and more even like it is when we are a young aspen tree. The deeper layers of skin are what I refer to as the pretty layer of our skin. So this purple and kind of golden yellow area are the epidermis and the dermis. And we want these areas to be as thick and hardy as possible. This is kind of like our elasticity layer, like our rubber band or our sphinx to our skin. What happens as we age is we lose a lot of these cells. They don't function very well. And these areas thin significantly. So anything you can do, whether it's through skin care, or different devices to help plump up these layers of skin. That's our goal in getting this to be um, as hardy, thick, and uh, beautiful as possible. This is a great picture that shows uh, how we lose volume, not only in our skin, but at the level of the bone. So replacing volume using fillers or fat transfers is another very important part of achieving an overall rejuvenative look. If you only rely on one thing, like create just improving the laxity um, by doing a surgical procedure without improving the skin or the volume loss, you're kind of missing the boat for the most comprehensive form of rejuvenation possible. So here's just another view of a young skull on the left and an older skull on the right and seeing the volume loss at the level of the bone. You can see the orbits have become much larger. That's the bony cup that holds the eyeball and the upper jaw or maxilla becomes more narrow with volume loss as well as the cheekbones. So again, this just demonstrates that while thicker skin is going to make you look younger, you likely are going to benefit from adding volume through fillers or fat transfer. For, to improve your overall look. All right, I'm going to circle back to skincare one last time here because you're going to hear us talk about prepping your skin for any of the procedures that I'm about to cover. A skin prep means that you have prepared your skin for the trauma of having one of these procedures. Um, any type of irritation or traumatic event on your skin can lead to something called hyperpigmentation. Hyperpigmentation is the formation of brown spots and the whole reason why most of the people are here doing good things to their skin is to reduce these brown spots. So by being on hydroquinone and Retin-A prior to your procedure will decrease the chance that you are going to develop hyperpigmentation in response to the irritation of these treatments. Um, it may be as short as two weeks for some patients. It may be as long as six weeks for people with darker skin types. I honestly use skin prepping uh, components like hydroquinone and Retin-A as part of my daily skincare regime. The other thing is making sure that your skin is well hydrated before many of these procedures. Um, whether it's using radio frequency or laser, the target or a big component of how it works is the water content of your skin. And using hyaluronics and good moisture protection can help get your skin in the best uh, hydrated shape possible to achieve quick healing and the most aggressive result we can give you with limited injury to your tissues. Once your skin is adequately prepped, you can move on to doing microneedling, microneedling with heat or radio frequency, utilizing filtered light to improve the overall color and health of your skin, and lasers which are geared more towards the overall texture. 
Microneedling involves making tiny holes in the skin with little bitty needles, uh, which stimulates your body's release of growth factors and stimulates collagen. A series of these can improve the texture of your skin, and it's also an awesome opportunity to add growth factors, which will give your collagen formation a huge boost. This is a procedure that can often be combined with something like broadband light that we'll cover a little bit later. This has minimal downtime. Uh, you can put on makeup the following day. You may walk out of the office a little bit pink or red, but usually within several hours you look pretty darn good. This is always best done as a series and I'm um, topical numbing medicine, uh, a cream is typically all anyone would need. Intracell is microneedling on steroids. So microneedling is combined with radio frequency, which is a form of heat to give you much more aggressive results. Our device was just approved in July of 2016. And for science geeks out there, it includes both bipolar and unipolar modes, insulated needles, and it deposits this heat deep in the tissue for more tightening and tissue remodeling while while being very gentle on the surface of the skin. This slide shows a close-up of these needles. So the gold is insulated and just the silver tips are where the energy comes out. And it's a pneumatic device that basically just punches down these needles into your skin. Um, the slide on the right side shows uh, areas of collagen formation. So this can be very powerful and again is recommended to be done in a series for the best results possible. All right, here's me, patient zero, the first one having this procedure done in the office. Um, I only use topical numbing medicine and we do have multiple options um, for improving the discomfort that you're going to feel. So we can do blocks if you're interested in a more aggressive treatment. Um, I think it's also very kind and gentle of us to offer uh, oral pain medication, such as a Valium or maybe a narcotic pain pill if you're interested. And this is a procedure where we also would like you to take uh, an antiviral uh, prophylaxis, like something like Valtrex, to help prevent cold sores, which which can occur uh, due to the uh, irritation of having a procedure such as this. So here I am on the left, um, almost immediately after the procedure, it was after I'd gotten home, and um, I actually was just getting ready to go out to dinner. Um, the picture on the right is two days later when I was coming in for clinic. I apologized to the colleagues I was having dinner with that night that I looked awful and they had no idea what I was talking about. I basically just went out to dinner not wearing makeup and they couldn't tell that I had just done anything to my skin. Now not everyone is going to have a smooth first 24 hours. Um, there's definitely a little bit of puffiness that you can see and the, again the picture on the right is with me coming into clinic two days later uh, ready to see all of my patients. This is a series of photos that were supplied by the company. Um, this device was developed in Korea and it shows the power of the deep tissue remodeling that can happen. This is specifically a great technology for people with acne scars. Uh, the picture on the left is a before. The picture in the middle is one week after the second treatment and the picture on the right is an additional two weeks later after the second treatment before the third and this is like shocking how good the changes are in the deep tissue. Um, one thing I've learned from industry photos such as this is this is probably one of their home runs not something everyone can expect but it is really exciting to see the possibilities. So again, this is the same patient where the before picture is on the left and the right is following three treatments before his uh, fourth treatment. So that is a really impressive uh, change in deep texture with something that can be done in the office and minimal downtime following each one of these. 
So let's move on now to broadband light or intense pulse light. Depending on the device that you own, they each have different uh, copyright names. So light, visible light, bright light encompasses all light in the visible spectrum. And you can filter this light to change what it's going to be doing when it finds the skin. We love broadband light because it is really the jack of all trades. We can use it to target brown spots. We can use it to char uh, target red or vascular lesions. We can use it to actually remove hair. Um, and we can also add heat to modulate uh, the way the tissue reacts. Broadband light likes diffuse targets. Here's what I mean by diffuse targets. This is another one of my analogies, so humor me here. Pretend it's a sunny day and you're walking through this parking lot and you put your hand on each one of these cars. Obviously, they're all going to be warm if it's a sunny day, but the black car is going to be the hottest, right? It's an oversimplification, but it makes it kind of easier for you to understand. What if you could turn on the sun and tell it to really make the black cars the hottest, but try to spare the red ones, the brown ones, the orange ones in the parking lot? We could also tell it to just specifically heat up the red ones. Um, because brown is a lot like red, you'd expect that one to get a little bit warmer than, say, perhaps the white car. So broadband light is kind of like that. We can heat up the black like a hair follicle, but go easy on the browns and reds. Likewise, we can target the browns and reds and hopefully uh, protect something more like the, uh, the dark black ones. So BBL likes parking lots full of cars, but it's not great at finding one specific car. It's kind of like the sun, but not really like a flashlight. Lasers are very different. They have one wavelength and they are looking for only one thing. A laser is kind of like a cop with a flashlight walking through our parking lot looking for a blue Prius. He's going to look until he finds exactly that, a blue Prius, and pretty much ignore something like a red truck, a white SUV, because it knows exactly what it's looking for. Now, once that cop finds the blue Prius, he might give it a ticket, or he might boot it, or have it towed away. So, Towing it away is kind of like an ablative laser. When it finds its target, it's going to vaporize or destroy the target. If it finds the target and just tickets it, that's a little bit more like a non-ablative laser. So here's our broadband light handpiece, and this sort of purplish rectangle is a sapphire crystal that gets really, really cold, and that helps pr protect the surface of your skin from the heat that's delivered from the flash of light. Remember that broadband is best for color correction, treating pigmented lesions like age spots, vascular lesions, uh, blood vessels, rosacea. It can be used to remove hair and also treat acne. A wonderful part of broadband light treatments is that it helps to in increase the collagen production, which improves your skin texture. There's also some really fascinating research that shows that repeated broadband light treatments can modulate the genetic expression of your skin. All right, this is a super cool study that this guy did using broadband light. Uh, Patrick Bitter is a dermatologist, and he enrolled patients in a 10-year-long study. At the beginning of the study, he took close-up photographs of their skin and then treated them with at least one broadband light treatment a year, but up to about three, I think, on average, and then took close-up pictures of their skin at the end of the 10 years. These pictures Pictures were then all mixed up, and people like myself, um, nurses, uh, dermatologists, people that work in the industry, were then uh, asked to judge the ages of these different um, of these different patients. We were not bad on judging the ages of the befores. On average, we thought they were about an age younger than their actual age. So if someone was really 55 years old, we guessed that they were within a year of that, 54 years old. So we did really, really well on the befores. 
But at looking at their after photos, we were way off. We actually judged the after photos to be two years younger than their befores, their starting age. So even though they were now 10 years older, we thought they were two years younger. So this is a really, really fascinating study that shows the power of using broadband light. So here's one of the patients from his study. On the left, she's 38 years old. On the right side, this is 10 years later, where she's had a total of 32 BBL treatments um, over the 10 years. So that's about a uh, little over three treatments a year for the 10 years. And look at how much better her skin looks on the right. Here's another patient from the study who had just over two treatments a year for nine years. On the left, she's 58, and on the right, she's 67. I don't know about you, but I want that skin on the right. Now this study led to even more research and this is a fascinating study where they learned that doing broadband lights can change the way your genes are expressed in your skin. Now researchers know there are batches of genes which are associated with aging skin and some of these genes are really active when you're young and we'll call these the pretty genes that add elasticity, a pretty glow, all the pretty things about our skin. Skin. And they kind of peter out or go to sleep as you get older. Then there's also genes that are associated with older people that aren't active when you're young, but kind of wake up when you get old. We'll say that these are kind of the wrinkle, barnacle, age spot genes. So when you're young, these young pretty genes are active and the older genes are sleeping. And as you get older, the young pretty genes go to sleep and the older genes become more active. After performing three broadband light treatments, skin was rebiopsied. So they got a sample at the beginning and a sample after three broadband light treatments. And they saw some pretty fascinating things that some of these young genes woke back up in the older patients and some of the old genes kind of simmered down and went back to sleep. So this was really super cool and kind of a game changer as far as what we understood as the power of broadband light treatments. So that's where they came up with Forever Young BBL. Now, additional broadband light treatments are used to correct color. So we're talking typically reds and browns. And you're going to need to do a quick series, usually a month or two apart, to help correct this color. A minimum of treatments would be three of these, but some people may need more to help get the best result. Then ideally you're going to continue to do broadband light treatments two to four times a year. This can easily be combined with other skin procedures like the microneedling or the intracell that we've already talked about. And the beauty of this is there's really no downtime with just traditional broadband light. You still need to keep your skin prepped to maintain your results and no anesthetic is typically required but some people can use top if you need it. Initially, the first few treatments to correct those color are going to be uh, something you're going to feel a little bit more, a little more spicy. So sometimes people can use topical for those, but for the forever young or the maintenance broadband light treatments, uh, you typically don't need anything. So here are another couple of industry photos showing the power of broadband light treatments. Um, it's no wonder that when lay people are asked um, to judge the ages, that correction of your hyperpigmentation uh, definitely makes you look younger. Here's another patient um, from the front where you can see an overall improvement in the color and glow of her skin. And you can even use broadband light off the face, um, typically neck where there's lots of reds from sun damage or a disorder that results from this called poikiloderma. Um, you can also use it on the chest and on the hands. Remember that it is essential to use sun protection afterwards so that you don't get these spots back right away. 
So now let's move on to lasers. As opposed to broadband light, which can do lots of things, laser really only has one wavelength and is looking for one thing. You can have a hair removal laser or a vascular laser, but the hair removal laser is only looking for a dark hair follicle and the vascular laser is only looking for something that's red in color. I'm going to talk about lasers that are used for skin rejuvenation and they're also looking for just one thing. That one thing is water. CO2 lasers, which were the original rejuvenative laser, were looking for water. Our Cyton erbium laser is also looking for water. And when it's fired against your skin, it'll go through the dry outer layer of skin into the epidermis and the dermis and go even deeper to find that water. We can do this with precision. If you fire this laser on something like a dry piece of paper, nothing's going to happen. But the more water you have in your skin, which is why we really love people to be on a hyaluronic and be using moisturizers leading up to their procedure, as well as being super hydrated by drinking lots of water on the day of your procedure, you are giving that laser a fantastic target. And once it finds its target, that's where the magic happens. All right, laser energy can be delivered in a pattern, and lawn care can be used as an analogy. You come to me because you want your lawn to look pretty and your skin to look better. Now, I can mow it, um, which makes the grass all look smooth, and I can also aerate it, which leaves little channels for new growth of grass, which makes your lawn healthier and more attractive. Now, aerating it doesn't look good right away, right? Because it looks like there's like a million little cat poops in your yard, but you know that in the long term, it's really, really good for your lawn to grow rich and healthy grass. Laser energy can also be delivered a couple of ways. You can go full field like mowing or do a dot matrix pattern like aerating. Obviously, that aerating is much, much deeper. So you are reaching different levels of skin with these two procedures. Ideally, you can do both at the same time on the same patient. The mowing or full field is, re is referred to as micro laser peel. And if you're going deeper or more aggressive, it's called resurfacing. But it's basically the same thing, treating the skin full field. The dot matrix pattern is referred to as fractional. Remember Fraxel? That was like the first company that came up with this dot matrix pattern. Um, they were the first, and now we have of pro-fractional and fractional CO2. The advantage of a, fraction, of a fractional treatment is that you have a lot of skin left that has not been treated, intact skin between all of these holes, and that helps tremendously with healing and avoiding complications. So you can go really deep to treat things like acne scars or less deep for a more mild rejuvenation with faster healing. You can also change the density or the pitch between the number of these dots in a given space. So remember when we talked about that police officer walking through the parking lot and he can either give you a ticket or tow your car away? An ablative laser is towing your car away. It vaporizes or removes the tissue when it finds its target. I'm um, Erbium lasers are ablative lasers, and also CO2 or carbon dioxide lasers are ablative lasers. Um, you can expect that when you have this procedure, you're going to have raw tissue, um, raw bloody tissue. And something like this is going to give you much more aggressive results, um, but it is going to have a longer downtime. So non-ablative lasers are just like the cop that gave a ticket or booted your car but did not tow it away. Non-ablative lasers will injure the underlying tissue, but it doesn't remove it. That injury leads to collagen stimulation and uh, wound remodeling, which improves the overall quality of the skin. Now, these are much less aggressive in their results, so non-ablative lasers are always recommended to be done in a series. But there's still a role for this because there's easier recovery and shorter recovery. So people who have less downtime or are frightened of the more ablative uh, approach have an option for still improving their skin.
The old CO2 laser, which was very popular in the 1980s to the early 2000s, was an ablative laser that was attracted to water, but it was kind of like a flamethrower. Say you call me about your yard that you want to look better, and it has all these weeds in it, and the weeds are your wrinkles, and I show up with this baby and scorch everything. Um, you bet I got rid of those weeds, and they are not coming back anytime soon, but your yard might look a little scorched and bear. So the CO2 laser had um, only full field treatment in the past and that it generated a, a tremendous amount of heat and that heat created a lot of collateral damage. Um, the damage killed melanocytes which were responsible for giving your skin some pigment um, and these were oftentimes killed during these treatments. So there were no more wrinkles but it also resulted in something called hypopigmentation which was permanent whitening of your skin. The heat also could led to scarring um, due to the depth of the treatment. And the CO2 lasers, while they worked really well for getting rid of wrinkles, had tons of complications. So a permanent whitening or hypopigmentation was unfortunately very common. And you couldn't bring this down onto the neck skin because the neck doesn't heal near as well as the face does. And we still respect that with the lasers today, even though we're not using uh, super aggressive treatments. Um, also in the past, they made the mistake of going really deep after say like around the lip lines. And so people had patches of hypopigmentation in different areas of their face. These old lasers had prolonged redness. I mean, people think if they're going to look red for a month or so after a treatment now, that's a bad thing. But this could go on for months and months and months. And there, here also shows uh, the picture on the left at the earlier stages of healing. And then over on the right, after many, many uh, further laser treatments down the line to help improve that transition zone where scarring had occurred. So I don't have to tell you why we were happy to leave that era of full-field CO2s. And erbium uh, was a wonderful progression that we made. So erbium is more attracted to water, so it works great for rejuvenation. And specifically, the Cyton Jewel laser that I have has flexibility where I can add some heat where I want it. I can take heat away where I don't want it. Um, this gives us tremendous flexibility for not only different patients, populations for but also for different areas on your face. So uh, the technological advancements have really improved the overall uh, flexibility and safety profiles when using lasers. All right, so let's start with the profractional laser treatment, which is the weakest and quickest healing of the ablative lasers that we can offer you. So this is the dot matrix pattern or aerating your skin. Everyone needs to be prepped with Retin-A and Hydroquinone. I would say on average about a month before the procedure is probably going to be adequate. Longer for dark skinned people, shorter for lighter skinned people. You want to avoid sun for two weeks prior to this and any of the procedures that we're talking about. Viral uh, prophylaxis in the form of a medication called uh, Valtrex helps to prevent a herpes outbreak. And even if you've never had a cold sore before, we treat everybody. You can use topical treatment or forms of injection, and this can be supplemented with oral medications to make it more, com uh, more comfortable for you. You're going to need moist healing, and if you're really smart, you're going to take advantage of adding supplemental growth factors when we've just made these holes in the skin so you can get excellent penetration. Healing can take um, usually about three to five days before you are in makeup and out and about. Your skin is going to continue to remodel for months afterwards. Now, typically, we don't usually do profractional all on its own anymore. We're usually going to combine this with other procedures. So I've always really loved this slide because it's close enough that you can appreciate the changes from profractional. There's an improvement in texture and pores. Um, you may not see a difference in someone's skin from far away, but when you look up close, if this is your skin, you're going to really notice that there's an improvement here. 
So again, like always, I had to be one of our first uh, patients getting treated. And I we had time at the end of a Friday and I was like, oh, yay, let's do this really fast. So I did not warn my family that I would be walking in to um, after my day's work looking like this. So uh, needless to say, they were a little bit surprised. Now, we do more aggressive treatments as a standard than this um, because times have changed and I think this was probably about seven or so years ago when I had this treatment done. So that last picture was Friday night, and the one on the left here is Monday after I got out of the OR. So this is just three days later. Remember, we're a little bit more aggressive on our treatments now, so maybe um, you would maybe not look as good quite this fast. And then on the right, this is two weeks later. So looking at these side by side, you can see that there's an overall just general improvement in the quality of my skin, but it's not anything super dramatic. But that long ago, I didn't really need anything super dramatic. But by having a procedure like that, I have increased the thickness of the pretty layer of my skin and increased my skin's overall health. It's the combination of micro laser peel, which is a superficial mowing, and the profractional, which is the most common thing that we do in our office for skin rejuvenation using the laser. So you're going to have the same prep, uh, same medications, same anesthetics. Healing time is going to be a couple of days longer, depending on the depth. And again, the skin is going to continue to remodel over months. Here's another industry photo after two micro laser peel profractionals because again anything can be done in a surface and some of the normal um, results that you would expect to achieve. You can go a little bit deeper and get pretty nice results after just one treatment. You can also add something like fat transfer so that you can help to improve the overall volume while improving the surface of your skin. Now, resurfacing is just deeper full field mowing. And what that means is a more aggressive treatment of the wrinkles and improvement in the surface texture, but also a longer healing time. We're going to do the same type of skin prep. And oftentimes, these are the procedures that we do in the operating room that's combined with other things like a facelift or fat transfer. Moist healing uh, using a variety of products, including including our awesome, awesome, awesome growth factors that speeds up the healing is also what you're going to be doing to get uh, to heal and get yourself through this procedure. Um, these are going to have longer healing times. It may be as long as I used to say seven to 14 days before wearing makeup, before I was using the growth factors. But typically now most patients are going to be wearing makeup at seven days. You're going to continue to have a red or pink discoloration of your skin that maybe looks like a mild sunburn or flushing for up to a couple of months after this procedure. So these are some of my pictures, and I think the results speak for themselves. Now, these patients were done in the operating room while having other procedures, like um, some of them having facelifts and fat transfers uh, for most of these, also eyelid procedures. But look at the power of one procedure. Doing this when you're already asleep in the operating room and already have downtime planned makes all the sense in the world to me. Here's another patient that still has a little bit of the pink to the skin, but look at the difference in the texture, especially around the mouth and in the cheeks close to the mouth, which is not going to be improved with having a facelift alone. So again, use all that you have available to improve the volume, the laxity, and the appearance of your skin for a more harmonious and thorough rejuvenation. Here's another patient that um, just had one laser treatment in conjunction with her facelift and fat transfer. And another patient here, again, resurfacing profractional fat transfer and facelift. This patient also had some traumatic scars around her upper lip that were improved with the laser resurfacing and profractional in this area, and she additionally underwent a more comprehensive facial rejuvenation at the same time. 
So this patient had her upper lids done, but in the lower portion, she just has some fat transfer and lasering of the skin to improve the texture. Um, she's smiling a little bit more in the bottom picture, and I would too if my eyes turned out that pretty. And here's another patient who had a traditional upper eyelid blepharoplasty with um, fat transfer and lasering to the lower lids. All right, brace yourself because this is where you get to see what you look like um, when you're healing from these procedures. This is four days later of a patient that really let herself get a bit too dry around the mouth. And again, this is after multiple procedures, including facelift, fat transfer, um, eyelid surgery, and laser resurfacing. And this was before I was using my Omni Growth Factors. Um, so Again, I have been shocked, shocked, shocked that the healing has been so much faster. So this is maybe more what we would expect to say, see at about two or three days now instead of four to five days afterwards. And I think that those growth factors have really sped up the healing during this time of moist wound healing. So again, obviously looking at this picture, this may not be right for everybody or at every time, but that doesn't mean you can't still pursue laser rejuvenation. So what if you could have the best of both worlds, where you could have the easy, quick healing of a non-ablative laser with some of the more aggressive results of an ablative laser? What if you could bring together the forces of good and evil to achieve beautiful skin? Ta-da! That's where we have our Halo Hybrid Fractional Laser. Again, this works, I think, ideally more on the superficial layers of the skin, where maybe that intracell works for deeper tissue remodeling. So in the best of all worlds, you may be selecting different technologies during different visits for quick and easy downtime. So let me show you how this Halo laser, which is very unique in the field, works. Halo, the world's first and only hybrid fractional laser, works by using two laser wavelengths to synergistically repair and rejuvenate your skin. The new integrated cooling system helps to make the procedure more comfortable. Constant temperature monitoring of the skin ensures a safe and more accurate treatment. One laser targets the epidermis to reduce pigment and restore glow. The other laser targets the deeper dermis and removes years of sun damage from deep within. So ablating the superficial portion of the tissue in a mild fashion, which allows for quick healing, but then adding an injury deeper to the tissue allows for um, tissue remodeling over time in a gentle way rather than just ablating the whole entire channel. This allows for faster healing and the ability to wear makeup the next day. So I was the most poorly compliant patient ever when I had my halo. I found out on a Wednesday afternoon someone had time to do it. So I had my halo done and the picture on the left is the following day. Now right after my halo procedure I had to go to my son's lacrosse game and was outside in 90 degree heat under an umbrella for about three hours. After that I dropped him off at home and had to go to a lecture. This is the next day after I was in the OR and I should have been applying a moisturizer all day long but since I was scrubbed in all day my skin got a little bit dry so I don't look that great the next day but it's not horrible I think if you saw me walking through the hospital you'd know I was kind of pink but I didn't put any makeup on I could have and then the picture on the right is day two where I woke up in the morning uh, looking a little puffy around my eyes and kind of had a brawny appearance to my skin Here's day three after putting on some makeup, and I actually uh, was not at all self-conscious about the way my skin looked. The, you look up close, I have these little brown dots that are coming up on my skin, but um, I think most people that I saw in clinic that day really didn't notice anything. And here's day four when I first took my shower before putting any makeup on. So again, this is something you could easily heal from over the weekend, and if you are a compliant patient that actually uses uh, your skincare product and doesn't go out into 90 degrees 
degree heat for several hours right after the procedure, I think you'll heal a lot faster and that's definitely what we've seen. So here's another industry photo after two halos, and we have just recently purchased this Vizia camera, so we are able to take the quality of photos like this as well. I like to include the industry photos because they're so standardized, but we can do these Vizia photos as well. So again, this is after two. And another photo with a patient who has melasma or hormonally stimulated hyperpigmentation after just one. So this is one of the procedures that we can do on melasma patients um, that works quite well in conjunction with good skin care. And here's another patient um, after two halo treatments, again using the Vizia that helps to document the improvement of the skin. And here's one of my patients with early results after her in-office HALO procedure. And here's Tani after her results. And for many of you who know Tani, she also battles with melasma, which is the um, hormonal stimulation uh, creating pigmentation in the skin uh, that can be really difficult to treat with other procedures. Um, we like to stick with lasering and we like to stick with something milder like microneedling, um, but stay away from broadband light because it can stimulate some more of that pigmentation. Some patients will really swell up quite a bit after their halo treatment. Um, we kind of call this the Oompa Loompa phase. If you are someone that is sensitive to, say, mosquito bites and get a lot of swelling, um, it's smart for you to also take antihistamines, and such as Benadryl, before the procedure uh, to help minimize this. And, you know, we can't really detect ahead of time who's going to swell quite a bit. Um, everyone's going to be a little bit different even with each individual treatment, but pre-treating with a Benadryl may be something that uh, could help quite a bit. So again, halo is not something you're going to get a lot of tissue tightening with if you're just planning on having one procedure, but he had a couple of days of downtime planned, so I went a little more aggressive on the lower lids, and it really paid off. You're going to get more aggressive uh, treatments with an ablative laser here, but we can, um, especially when done in a series, see some beautiful results with the halo. So who is this going to be um, good for? Well, people who need a quick fix. Say you have something coming up in a couple of weeks and you really want to polish and buff up your skin to make it look uh, really pretty for your upcoming event. Um, it will work on texture, great for pores, great for pigment, especially if you combine it with a broadband light treatment at the same time. Uh, great for acne prone skin because you don't have to do mo moist wound healing with this. I would also uh, combine it with um, growth factors if you possibly can. It's a good option for people with melasma who get uh, more hyperpigmentation as a result of stimulation from different procedures. Like I said before, if you can combine this with broadband light, I think it's awesome. It's great for maintenance and especially for those chickens that are afraid of doing an ablative treatment. Halo is not very good for people with deeper wrinkles or those who have expectations that they're going to just do one of these and be done. We also have better, more effective treatments for deeper tissue um, issues like acne scars. So consider combining Halo with other procedures in the office as a package kind of like Intracell. When you come in for a consultation, we can go over what's best for you right now. And I think probably the the best results we can possibly achieve in the office are combining all of the different procedures that we have over time. You may have lots of pigment issues and may need to start with broadband light treatments. You may have more superficial issues with your skin where halo is going to be just the ticket. You may want to combine halo with the intracell so that you're reaching those more superficial tissues uh, more effectively and then use the intracell to reach the deep layers, all with very minimal downtime. So come in and have your Vizia 
uh, baseline photos taken, meet with one of our very highly skilled professionals in the office to go over what your needs are, uh, what your budget is, and what your downtime budget is as well, and create a plan that's going to help you to achieve your goals the easiest way possible. So people are always asking how long does something last and these are my own pictures that I pulled up with the left being 12 years ago and the right being current. Now my skin looks better even though I'm 12 years older. It's a combination of multiple things. It's using good skin care. It's staying out of the sun or at least protecting my skin when I'm in the sun because I'm just like everybody else I'm going to be outdoors this is uh, broadband light treatments throughout the years a couple of lasers thrown in there and an intracell so you really can achieve better skin than you had even a decade ago with a little bit of diligence with everything you do that we do as plastic surgeons, there are some cheaper ways to do things and then some more expensive way to do these things. I can do simple hand liposuction with a syringe and a cannula tip and some numbing medicine in the office and keep, uh, keep the cost down, but um, it's probably not the best result I can get. I can use technology like cool sculpting to remove fat non-invasively and spend a couple hundred thousand dollars with the machines and the hand pieces that I need in order to achieve this. So technology can be more expensive. Now I can go over to Home Depot and buy a Dremel. Um, I can sterilize these tips and I can perform an improvement in surface skin texture and even deep skin texture. And that's what dermabrasion was. But there's a reason why this has been replaced. I love my Cyton Jewel and my Halo and my broadband light, but it costs me more than my first house, um, every car I've owned since I've been in practice, and probably every vacation I've ever taken, all in one box right there. But technology is really fascinating, and we can do things in a safer and more effective way than ever before. So for best practices, prep your skin and continue to use good skin care to maintain your results. Combine procedures to get the best result possible. Add growth factors to speed your healing and boost collagen production. And remember that this is an ongoing process and you can always continue to improve the quality and appearance of your skin.